Region's greetings and a Lampton warm welcome to the quiz show that's packed with pathetic puns, the region airs. My name is Simon Donald and we have two teams again tonight who will face five rounds of questions all about the region. Joining team captain Catboy is a ginger from Crawcrook, comedian John Fothergill, who's a regular on the London Comedy Store. He began his career mopping the decks of a North Sea oil rig and he's hoping to sweep the boards tonight. On Gavin Webster's team is Paul Smith. Paul is from Newcastle and he has won every honour in first class cricket. He would like us to point out that in 16 years he never once failed a drugs test before finally being caught on his 17th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick off this regional show before the entire region kicks off with us. We're going to start with Beyond Regional Doubt. In this round, uh, you're going to be asked three questions, and you have to put them together to form the name of one famous Northeastern person. Catboy and John to start. Which Northeast radio presenter is famous for flashing? Uh, another ginger, Alan Robson. Yeah, Alan Robson. Alan Robson, the flashing blade, is the <laughs> correct answer. So there's your first clue on the screen, blade. <laughs> OK, that's your first point. So moving on to your second question. Diane Udale from Stockton was better known as who? You need to ask me. Do you know any birds from Stockton? From Stockton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to picture the phone box I saw the card <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is she off gladiators? Is she one of these like gladiators, hard birds? She wasn't Shadow, was she? Jet. Jet. <laughs> You're right. It's Jet from Gladiator. Really? was Diane well Udale. That was a good guess. Uh, so Gladiator is your next clue. Gilbert's Fridge and Gilbert's Late both appeared on Time T's television. But who was Gilbert? Gilbert. I'm oh, what was it? Children's show was probably a fish. Now nah, hold on. Yeah, probably. Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Don't throw on me. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were a straight man. Well, he was a dragon, wasn't he? He was a green dragon, wasn't he? Ah, uh, he looked like a dragon, but why? Why? <laughs> why does anybody look like a dragon? Has <laughs> <laughs> he been in makeup? That's, that's the worst <laughs> LSD question I've ever had. You know what I mean? Why does anybody look like a dragon, man? Which is quite weird, because the two guests on the night look like they're in Led Zeppelin, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, the point being that he wasn't actually a dragon. He was an alien. Uh, oh, he just course. looked like a dragon. Oh, but the clue oh, no. that you'll get is <laughs> Gilbert the Alien. And Gilbert the Alien, who was uh, famous for dripping in snot, I believe. Yeah, I remember that. Now I've seen that. And I have been yeah. assured by people at Tiny T's television that it was actually no. KY Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us to tell you what connection is? What the connection is between those three images? I've got an, I think, personally, connection is that uh, film director, I can't remember what his name is. Who did Gladiator oh, and all that? Um, What's he called? Cameron Diaz. What's his name? Oh, Look at you, Newell. Well, I'll well. tell you what. <laughs> the film you director. Can you tell us those three films is what? Well, he directed Gladiator. Mm -hmm. He directed Alien. Ridley mm -hmm. Scott. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. And he did. Yeah. 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 Come on. <laughs> The correct answer was Ridley Scott, the Stockton-born film director of Alien, Gladiator and Blade Runner. Scott took his inspiration for Blade Runner from the Northeast and used Middlesbrough's chemical works to create his scenes of Hades. American audiences, however, were not convinced by Scott's visions of hell. They refused to believe that the pits of eternal damnation could really look that bad. <laughs> Alan Robson is famed for his ghost hunting. Mysteriously enough, his late Nate Ells callers are often seem to be possessed by spirits themselves, and many <laughs> appear also to be possessed by lager, wine and cider. <laughs> OK, Gavin and Paul. Where did the teenager christened rat boy make his home? Uh, he was a one-man crane wave, wasn't he, Rat Boy? And there was Spider Boy as well. 
That's and then there was a gay burglar called, he was like a nice boy, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, what he did, he used to, um, he didn't steal anything, he'd just break into your house and bitch about the decorating and then leave, you know? <laughs> uh, I think it was, I, th I believe it was, you're probably not aware of this, but he, he actually, it was in the heating ducts of the biker wall. The biker wall is the correct answer. Mary. Biker is your clue. Okay, who were the sleepy yellow stars of Durham Gala's pantomime Cinderella? Any idea? No. <laughs> the, um, the sleepy yellow stars. Okay, I'm going to pass it over. Any ideas on the other side? We're, we're thinking it, it were jaundice sufferers from RBI. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently it's a it's a TV thing. Bananas in pyjamas is the answer, so no really? points, but you get the clue. <laughs> oh, don't watch TV. It's so obvious now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wish you'd just happened to say bananas in pyjamas. Right, next one. In 1979, who walked out of Lynn Spencer's youth show? Check it out. Oh, um, uh, Lynn Spencer had a youth show, did she? On Tainty's television Tainty's with Chris what? Cowie. With Chris Cowie? Mm -hmm. Oh, rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> This was a genuinely rock and roll moment. Was it? Um, mm -hmm. Well, 79, it was probably, probably um, a punkish person, wasn't it? Might have been, uh, was it? I don't no. We well, don't need to whisper it. <laughs> We're not in private. <laughs> <laughs> um, I reckon it's probably John Lydon. You're right, it's John Lydon. Well done. So there is your third clue, John Lydon. Can you put all three together to make one famous Northeast person? It's obviously, it's obviously the play on words, baker. It's obviously like a, a, a baker, yeah. Okay, um, and pajamas. Um, right. What? We need, we need to move along a little. Yeah. We're really struggling here. I as would well. see it, Ant and Dick. Nah. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Mm. Well, it's a guess. We haven't had a guess yet, have we? Is it true that you're their real dad? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you gonna are you gonna I'll say, say that, yeah. are you gonna, gonna say, you deck or are you gonna say deck? I would say um Well which one's the posher one? I would say Declan's from Baker. Are you going with Deck? Well I'm sorry, Deck's the wrong answer, it's Ant. Ant McPartland out of Ant and Deck. Ant released a single <laughs> called Let's Get Ready to Rehumble soon after leaving the kids' TV show Biker Grove. Having been blinded in a paintball accident, and if you've ever heard the record, you'll know that the tragedy was that he was shot in the eyes rather than in the throat. <laughs> John Lydon also had a cameo walkout disappearance on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, when he got into trouble for uttering on air the last two taboo words. That explains why Alan Robson went into radio, you're not allowed <laughs> on television. <laughs> The original biker rat boy made many death-defying escapes to evade arrest. Eventually he was caught by a trap baited with cheese, and onion pasties and a two-litre bottle of diamond white. <laughs> Let's move on to our next round. Reed on the road with the man who's not so much out and about as quite simply down and out. Arthur Two-Stroke. Hello, Regionaires. I'm in Morpeth the final resting place of suffragette Emily Davison, who threw herself under the king's horse, bringing freedom to millions, especially her husband, who she'd been nagging for ages to put some shelves up. <laughs> but did she end male prejudice here? I'm going to ask some local couples who wears the trousers. You never know, some bird might burn her bra, and I'll cop a look at her lovely jubblies. <laughs> so, did Emily Davison do away with male ignorance and prejudice in the Northeast? How many women living in Mortmouth wear the trousers, and most probably a moustache too? Uh, what do you reckon? I would say seven. seven. Are, we, are you going to check that they're real women as well, because that's... <laughs> Out and out, under all that fat. <laughs> <laughs> you can check if they're real women. You just, you just throw a ball, and if they kind of catch it, they're obviously women. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, it's a comedy show. <laughs> I would say seven. Yeah, seven. seven. You're going with seven? Right, mm -hmm. Gavin and Paul. Out of? Out of nine. <sighs> Couples asked in more. I'd probably say uh, a few, few less um, 
five. Whatever the question was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably five, yeah, five's a, a nice round saying, you, number. So, right, you're saying five, and let's go back and see. Who wears the trousers in your house? I do. <laughs> I try to let him wear the trousers some of the time. <laughs> me. Me, definitely. Me. <laughs> no, it's definitely me. I'm waiting for the trousers to answer. <laughs> it's me, isn't it? I'm here in Berwick asking couples. Yeah, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I'm here in Morpeth asking couples who wears the trousers in their relationship? I think we oh, share them. Oh, yeah, shared. One leg each. <laughs> what? <Four. the? laughs> um, it depends what it's about, but probably me. <laughs> Both of us. Sometimes. Usually my wife. I think we have a leg each. No. No, no, no. no, no. I do when she lets me. <laughs> <laughs> so, only two definitely wore the trousers, which means that Gavin and Paul's team were the closest on five. As we go into the break, the scores are running at three apiece. Welcome back and on with our Mr. Region round where the teams have to work out who our mystery guest Mr. X is by asking questions with only a yes or no answer. Obviously he can't be Ant or Deck because judging from their TV dominance they say yes to everything. <laughs> so on with our mystery guest, welcome Mr. X who is going to be asked a question first by Catboy. Well I reckon our first question has got to be is your middle name Knuckles or... <laughs> Starter, rock hard bastard. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so you don't work in door security? No, no, no. Do you know the craze? Oh. No, no. Um. A newly qualified preacher? No, no. If I don't make my payment on my fridge, are you the fellow who comes back and possesses it? <laughs> no. Oh, well, all right, well, you might have reformed. Do you um, now um, sell... Um, um... Substances? No. <laughs> I, was saying that. I, was, I thought you'd be a bit like George Foreman. You may just do grills and all that now. Yeah? <laughs> um, are you Trevor Howard? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Frankie Howard? No. <laughs> oh, no. That's two, <laughs> that's two, that's two, that's two questions. Two no's. He's messing two about. He's met, oh, oh, I messed the run. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's he's only a knuckle. This is a serious <laughs> question. He looks like a around. knuckle. Sir. Yes. Gavin's team. Eh, uh, he looks... I mean, he'd obviously joke and aside, because I wouldn't joke with you, sir. <laughs> uh, it looks like you're involved in that world. I'm not saying it's a murky world, <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's, um, it's not something I'd like to be involved I'll in. I'll say yes to that. Right. Thank you very much. Anything for you. <laughs> oh, right. Bollocks. You really really are a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Are you, um, um, are you a copper? No. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> want to <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is it something to do with boxing? Yes. Is it really? Ah. You're not there, uh, Glenn McCrory. Things have gone all wrong for you. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> um. Are you a referee? No. Ah, I know this. I do know this. And I didn't. Um, Muhammad Ali came here, didn't he? About 30, yeah, 25 years ago or something, didn't he? And did you? Did you have something to do with that? Yes. Right. Real. You're right. Did you repossess his fridge? He's <laughs> 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 a shot in, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it what was, what was that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, if you want to tell him, call him a dickhead, just don't, don't do it quietly to me. I'm, don't make the balls for me to fail, mate. You know? No, I know what it is. It's, um... Yeah, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a converted, isn't it? Um, Muhammad Ali... 
Con converted you oh, what? to oh, Islam. It, it, no. Is that something to do with a change of a religion and something taking place? Muhammad Ali uh, did go to a mosque in South Shields, but that's not what uh, Mr. X's story is. You must it, have. Did you fight him? <laughs> yes. Really? That's the answer. Well, X's. the word fight is uh, what's brought him. Wow. Wow. Nice. Wow. Mr. X, um, <laughs> we're sitting taking the pit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X, our mystery guest is Reg Long, who boxed with Muhammad Ali on his visit to the Northeast in 1977. Ali had come to the bout unprepared and quickly had to find a spare pair of shorts. Not for himself, but for Reg, who, when he heard he was to face the world heavyweight champion, <laughs> had shit himself. <laughs> Reg, yes. Reg, I think, I think this is such a fantastic story. We should hear a little bit from you about it, if that's all right with you. Well, it's, you know, I mean, um, at the time when they brought Ali over, everything was sort of um, thrown together in the spur of the moment. And at the time, they had no boots for him. They had no yeah. shorts for him. And from my amateur days as boxing, I had a pair of red velvet shorts, which were made by Val English. And, uh, and from my amateur days, I was a heavyweight, and they were quite they were big. And they said, oh, Reg Long will have a nice big red, red velvet short. Ask if you still got them. So the four meet amateur trainer, my amateur trainer came around. He got the shorts. I said, what are these for? Like? And he said, oh, you're not going to believe this. But anyway, I said, right, you can have them as long as they let me spar with them. Yes. You know, so that's how I got in, in so the door. So then you actually fought Ali? Well, I did an exhibition he, with him, you know. Yeah. And he wore your shorts? He wore my shorts. What a story. And, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Reg Long. Thank Yay. you. Let's go back to Arthur Two-Stroke and see where on earth in the northeast he has been now. I am the ghost of Arthur Two-Stroke. I am dead of Regionaire's disease. Hey, hope you didn't cheat your pants. I've been floating through the ghostly town of Beamish. It's a well-known fact that Beamish is haunted. So I'm going to ask some Beamishites whether or not they've seen an apparition. <laughs> Regionaires, have you a ghost of a chance? Okay, teams, how many people out of eight in Beamish claim they have seen a ghost, bearing in mind that they don't actually exist? <laughs> Mark, bearing in mind how that. many teams... Uh, sorry, how many people in Beamish... Bearing in, mind that the whole, ghost. bearing in mind that the whole tourist trail is depending on the past and that. Well, that's up the how many, how many is out of eight? How many? Out of eight. Out of eight asked how many in Beamish have seen a ghost? Quickly. I'm willing did we, to... Did we not see it the first time? Do they not get to see it this time? And we get okay, to place your bet first if you want. Who's in charge of this game? Me. Me. Place your bet. <laughs> how many out of eight? I think you think God is in charge of this game. <laughs> Anybody wants to convert after the show? <laughs> Can we have a bet out of eight? It, you four. Damn. So we'll, we'll go in the middle somewhere. We'll go to four. Oh. Okay. <laughs> four yeah, for yeah. Gavin and four. <laughs> Can we say wanker? Please <laughs> wanker. Not on the air, but uh, um, place a bet. I think we're. What do you reckon? I say about six. Because everybody oh, reckons they've seen ghosts. Do you reckon lower? Everybody says they've seen a ghost. I'll take yeah. six. Am I taking six? Are we losing? Is that near? You yeah, we'll take one six. Point. You're, you're taking six, yeah. OK. Let's go down. back and see. Have you ever seen a ghost? <laughs> no, I don't think so. May I congratulate you on your wonderful moustache? Thank you very much. It's real, is it? Have you ever seen a ghost? No, I haven't. No, not that I can think of, anyway. No, no, I haven't. Uh, Why? I expect to see one day. No, sir, I haven't. No. I wonder, have you ever seen any ghosts? No, I haven't seen a ghost at all. Excuse me. Yes. Are you the landlady of the Sun Inn? I am, yes. The Sun Inn is reputed to have ghosts. Have you ever seen ghosts? Well, I'm pleased to say I haven't, no. Have you not heard any rattling of chains? I haven't, no. We're oh. from the future. Oh, wonderful. I like a time traveller. I've been frightened lots of times, but I don't think I've ever seen a ghost, no. 
<laughs> I can tell you who's going to uh, win the football league and you could bet on it and win. Well, if it's Sunderland, I'm quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sunderland don't win anything. <laughs> oh, nothing changes then. <laughs> So none of them have seen a ghost, which means that Gavin's team are the closest with four, and they get the point. So, now it's nether region time. Our quick fire round, buzz in when you want, and remember, you've absolutely nothing to win. Okay, fingers on the buzzers. Are you ready? What is Sting's real name? Gordon Sumner. Gordon Sumner is right. What is Jimmy Nail's real name? I can't say what you said yesterday. <laughs> James Alowich is... Neil? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's, across. it's G uh, James Bradford, isn't it? Is it? Well, I have to give you a point each, because you got some of it each. Uh, it's James Aloysius Bradford. Uh, what oh, is... yeah, I didn't put the full stop on the end either, did I? You know what I mean? <laughs> you come on, come on, I'm losing. You've got a point. Crack on. What is Teesside University's real name? Um, uh, O-level dropout club. <laughs> Coal miners' entrance. It's <laughs> Teesside Polytechnic, of course. He came from Whitby. He had a crazy world. He used to set his hat on fire. Name him. Oh. Arthur Brown. Arthur Brown's correct. Famous for news round and country file. John Craven. John Craven's correct answer. Uh, does Northumberland have more self-employed or unemployed? Self-employed. Self-employed's right. Which college mm. has campuses in Ashington, Amble, Berwick, Blythe, and Pontelan? Uh, the um, University of the particular areas of Northumberland. <laughs> I'll pass no. that one over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say Northumberland's that. a clue. North Tyneside? Northumberland College. Oh, no. <laughs> in, 19... <laughs> in 1644, Parl Parliamentarian Sunderland launched a major offensive against which royalist city? Um, it's actually Newcastle, I think. It is, it's Newcastle is the correct answer. Is okay, that right? so like at the end it, of the show, yeah. Catboy has pipped <laughs> Gavin by one point. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, a trip to the finest galleries in Paris for our winners and a trip to the Washington galleries for our losers. <laughs> Many thanks to John Fothergill and Paul Smith for coming in. I'm Simon Donald and this abomination was the Regionaires. Good night.